Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, yes, my name is Sonia Jones. I'm a certified control English instructor, and I am going to talk to you today how I use the certified um, the control English to teach my dog Benji uh, better behavior. Um, not to chase the squirrels and kill them like he used to. And I wanted him to um, have a more desirable behavior so that I could go with him off leash without having to worry about him killing other animals. So I'm going to start this uh, presentation showing the final behavior after we had worked uh, several months on um, um, teaching him not to chase squirrels. So it's the first thing that I want to show. Um, and you will see that in the video, at some point, uh, Benji is kind of walking off leash. There's a squirrels. Well, I will show you where the squirrels are. And um, he is uh, walking close to me, walking together, pointing to me where the squirrels are, not always in a very... Um, um, how can I say this? Um, sometimes in a more subtle manner, but you will see most of the times either an ear flick or his head turning, orienting towards me. So let's look at the video now. There's no sound, by the way. So I'm going on at the opposite direction. He turns there, right, and orients to me. And then you can see here the squirrels moving. And we are playing, look at that. Um, there he is using, yes, he was using his ear over there, showing me and reporting, mom, there's a squirrel there. There, there. I have to say that um, at this point, I had high value treats for Benji because even though he was pretty fluent in the behavior, he was not fluent enough yet uh, to have kibble. But at the end of the presentation, you will see him um, uh, with other wildlife and I was using kibble because what happens is as they get more um, fluent in the behavior, they uh, the behavior itself becomes reinforcing. The routine itself becomes reinforcing. So. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit about what is Control English. And Control English is a program that was developed by Leslie McDevitt. It's a conversational style of training that helps dogs to uh, focus in an em environment with uh, distractions or any other triggering situations. And we use a lot of relaxation and calming, um, teaching the dog how to relax. And uh, one of the things that I love about Control English is that it gives the dog a choice. It gives them control. Because as we are going to start seeing some of the games that we use, is the dog in reality who is cueing me to keep the game going. So uh, let's talk about the basic concepts. Conversational style training, as I mentioned, the dog has a saying. That means that uh, we have to develop a communication system. And it's very important for you to learn how to read your dog body language. That in itself, I'm not going to cover here because it will be a different topic, just an entirely webinar, how to read dog's body language, but that is very important. Um, we are going to talk about the foundation behaviors and patterns that we are going to use in Control English and the ones that I use to lay out, lay the ground for the work that we were going to do with look at that. So we, I didn't start teaching Benji look at that uh, from the beginning, Basically, you know, like when you are uh, learning something new, let's say when you are going to school, first you learn the ABCs and you, there's a progression, you know, things get harder and harder until you are uh, able to go to college and get your master's degree. So basically, this is what I'm going to teach you here and share with you, you know, how to lay that foundation with the dog. And very important to focus on relaxation and calmness. Um, being relaxed helps 
anyone, any animal, including humans, to learn better. And we keep an eye on our dogs, always to teach new behaviors when they are calm. And not only that, but at the end of this presentation, I will be touching a little bit on things that you can do to help your dog to learn how to relax as well. Okay, pattern games. Um, pattern games are a repetitive uh, set of rules and um, that um, once the dog understands how it works, the dog will be in control of the game because it will be the dog, the one pretty much saying whether the, the game keeps going or not. And this will become more clear once we go to the first uh, pattern game. Patterns are very soothing and can bring both uh, exciting behavior, stress behavior back to functioning behavior. And like I mentioned, the patterns use a start button. Um, it could be the dog looking at me, cueing me to put another treat on the ground. It's the dog giving me the message that he wants to keep going. And um, the pattern games are great tools to help dogs generalize in a variety of contexts because we are going to start teaching our dogs in a very boring room in our home and you know zero distractions and from there we are going to build that up little by little step by step to situations and places that the dog can manage and giving, you know, making sure that uh, he is on their threshold, like I mentioned, uh, calm. And the more that we practice the behavior, it becomes muscle memory. So these games are very simple to teach, yet very powerful. And because they are predictable, they are calming not only for the dog, but also for the owner, because then you know what you have to do next. So here is uh, the simplest um, control on leash game. It's called Up and Down. And you will see here in this video how I'm teaching Benji this behavior in my apartment. I decided to teach him when I'm sitting on a chair, very low distraction. Uh, I will place a treat on the ground. Benji will eat the treat and he will orient towards me. That means his head, he will lift, lift his, his head to look at me. That, that's why it's called up and down because the dog will do that movement. The head goes up, the heads go down and uh, the pattern keeps repeating. And you will see how I start increasing a little bit the difficulty of the game. So let's see the video here. He eats a treat, looks at me, does a start bottom, and then I put a treat on the ground. Now he tells me to repeat again. I make it a little bit more difficult here, same boring uh, place, but I'm standing. Same mechanics, looks at me, I place a treat on the ground, and we keep repeating the pattern. Now we are outside, in an easy environment for him. He's looking around, decides to look at me, treat on the ground, observes the environment, and you know, it's not there, but when he turns, look at me, I place another treat on the ground. Um, and then you will see, I will take him um, to a more, um, uh, more distracting place on the street and it's the same mechanics, but you will see where Benji is looking around, absorbing the environment. And when he's ready, he makes the decision to look at me to keep the pattern going. Let's take a look. He notices the dog, looks at me. and the pattern keeps repeating. So this is a very, this is the foundation that I use for, um, that we use in um, one of the foundation behaviors for the control on leash. After this, I like to teach another game that is called the two step. It's another pattern game. And this game helps to teach the dog to stay close to you because um, in order for, Benji to play safely.
Looks like we have a little audio issue. Just a second. Thanks for your patience, guys. Looks like Xenia lost her connection, but she's headed back in. And Xenia is joining us from Austria, in case anyone didn't know. So it's, it's exciting to have presenters from all over the world joining us. Does anyone have any good jokes? If you want to pop any jokes in the chat. No one has any jokes? Victoria, you only know rude ones. I gotcha. All right. What do you call a fish with no eyes? I don't know the answer to this one, Zoe. Fish. Okay, I got that. I get it. Uh, Rachel, what did the sushi say to the bee? Wasabi. Okay. Uh, where do dogs park their cars? Melissa, you're killing me. I need to know where dogs park their, oh, the barking lot. Got it. Uh, a termite walks into a bar. He says, is the bartender here? And the bartender says, yes, very. I don't get it. Heather, that one went above my head. How did the little Scottish dog react when he met the Loch Ness monster? He was terrified. <laughs> oh. Zenny, are you there? Thought I saw her pop in. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you are. Perfect. Let me share the screen. And I'm so sorry about that. I lost the connection. We told so. some really bad jokes while you were there. Oh, good. <laughs> Perfect. So let me put back the Thank you, everyone that gave us jokes. Yeah, thank you so much. And I apologize for the inconvenience. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the other um, control English game after uh, we have practiced um, the up and down. It's called the two-step uh, pattern game. And basically this teaches um, my, the dog to stay, to stay close to you, which is one behavior that we need as well when we are um, working on the look at that game um, around critters. Um, and especially if you plan to have your dog off leash, not only that your dog is, you know, uh, orienting towards you, even when there are distractions, but also that the dog decides to um, be close to you. So this is a very good game for that. And all the comments of how it works is on the video. So. Uh, let me just check something else. Yes, short sound, and then there we go. Choose environment with low distractions to start teaching this game. First, I like to do two or three repetitions of the up and down game. To remind the dog that we are in pattern. 
So we he already knows the up and down game. Then place a treat on the ground, and while your dog is sitting, take two steps away. Wait until your dog catches with you, and then place another treat on the ground. Repeat this pattern. As your dog improves, you can move to a more distracting environment. I also like to do two or three repetitions of the up and down game in the new place. My dog gets ahead of me here. To remind him of the pattern we learned before, I place the treat on the ground close to my feet. And I want to make a stop here because there's something that I'm, I'm not telling my dog what he did. Uh, I will not say wrong, but incorrectly or something that I what I'm telling him what I want him to do by placing the treat where I want him to be because for dogs um, as well you know um, where you please where you put the the reward the reinforcement the placement is very important so I'm reminding him here is where the reinforcement happens come here and you will see in the video that he corrects himself And I do it again here. And you can see in this repetition, he's placing himself correctly. And he's observing the environment, making the choice to come to me. When he looks at me, I, and catch, when he catches at me and he looks at me, I place the treat on the ground. But there you will see he notices the dog and it stays behind. The control on leash pattern games set the dogs up to make good behavioral choices and teach them to focus and work comfortable around the environmental distractions. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Have fun. Okay, so um, like I said, we start teaching always on the behaviors in an easy environment. And from there, we start building the dog, you know, to different more, uh, the di different uh, difficulties. Um, you don't have to teach this game how I was doing off leash. You can do it on leash when you are out and about. Um, and you can use a longer line so you can, the dog can have a little bit more space if needed. Okay, so we are keeping repeating these um, patterns. We always, I always like to start with the up and down. That is something that by now my dog knows uh, very well. And that becomes the start button to keep going into patterns. Now I'm going to uh, share the chair game, which is the other um, game that I have used to lay out the foundation to progress to the, uh, look at that for um, uh, preventing chasing of the squirrels. So this pattern game is excellent to uh, get the dog acclimated into a new space and absorb the um, environment. So let's see the video here. Um, it takes a little bit. Let me see if I can forward that. Um, yeah. So I'm starting with up and down again, something that he knows. And he is telling me, yes, mom, we can keep going. After three repetitions, when he looks at me, then I start walking to another station. I, in this case, I'm just using the ground. I place a treat. He looks at me after eating. And then when he does, I go back to the chair. And you can see how he is choosing to reorient towards me and keep focus on me. So here, let me stop a little bit. Uh, you are going to see I'm taking him to a little bit more challenging environment. Benji is not triggered by dogs, but he, when he chases a squirrel, the main trigger is movement. So I decided to do this game with having some dogs on the back. You will see them playing and running. So Benji can start um, getting used to movement around him 
that is, is still manageable, not triggering, but he can start processing that and we can start preparing him for something more challenging. So let's take a look. And by now you probably can see that we are starting to develop this communication. We are more synchronized than in the first videos. And um, it's part of the uh, control English. It happens organically. Um, okay, so now this is another one of my favorite pattern games. It's called Give Me a Break. So I'm taking the challenge a top notch here. Um, and you will notice here, there are some docs and Benji, eh, he, um, he's triggered by pretty much um, any wildlife, dogs, uh, rabbits, um, um, squirrels for sure. But uh, for him, the dogs, the birds are a little less triggering uh, than um, let's say a squirrel. So I'm choosing to do this game with some dogs here on the back. You can see they are protected because we have this fence and the dogs are not really moving that much. They are making some noise. Benji knows they are there. So, and this game is great um, because it will help me teach Benji not only to reorient towards me and look for me because in the pattern you will see me moving, but also to focus on me for longer periods of time, even when there are distractions. Um, I will place a treat on the ground, I will move, Benji will look at me, will look for me. When he comes to me, look at me, I will place another treat on the ground and repeat the pattern. So let's take a look of the game. See, he chooses to come to me a little slower, but he does. Looks at me, I put the treat, move away. And now he's starting to get a little bit more in sync and fast. And you can probably hear the dogs a little bit on the background. Okay, now, now, um, by now we have been practicing these behaviors, laying out the foundation. I'm assuming here that your dog already knows how to uh, relax on the mat. Um, if not, there's a lot of information on the internet about it. Um, there's the uh, Karen, Dr. Karen overall relaxation protocol that if you Google, you will find it. And um, I'm not going to go into that portion. I'm just going to introduce now, look at that. Because by now, I have been uh, working with Benji on him staying close to me, him uh, orienting towards me, uh, looking for me uh, when I'm moving, when there's distractions, exposing him to some movement from some animals like dogs or ducks and other critters that are not as triggering for him as the squirrels. And look at that will help me to, well, actually it, the look at that helps um, to reframe the picture. So what is triggering for a dog, it becomes a cue to play the game. And um, as Benji cannot report to me um, and turn to me and chase the squirrel at the same time, 
it works really well. So we are giving him another alternative. And is this alternative is an incompatible behavior with chasing the squirrels. And as we do more of this game, the game itself becomes reinforcing. But at the beginning, especially when you are kind of competing with squirrels, we have to have very high value uh, treats. But we will see that, you know, um, how uh, at, at the end I use Kibble. Um, here's a video by Kimberly Palermo, who is a wonderful certified control English instructor. And she was kind enough to uh, allow me to use this, her tutorial. In this video, you will see that um, she's starting with a neutral object and her dog is laying down on the mat and the dog is come all the way. The object means nothing to the dog. So there's no bad associations or feelings. And um, the other thing is from the beginning, we are teaching the dog that playing look at that means that they can look, they can report that the object the squirrel, the bunny is there, but they cannot interact with it. That is part of the rules. So um, you will see here in this video that Kim starts presenting a mug. When the dog looks at the mug, she clicks. She's using a clicker here um, and re reward, uh, reinforce the dog on, um, on the mat. And um, you will see the progression. And uh, sometimes the dog will do like more subtle movements. So pay attention to the head, the ears, and maybe the movement is not uh, as pronounced. But let's take a look at this excellent tutorial. And I want to do a pause here because as the dog is becoming more proficient when uh, he understands what Kim wants is when um, she's going to introduce the cue, the verbal cue of where is the mug or where is whatever, fill the blank, the squirrel, the bunny, anything. Where's the mug? Good girl. Where's the mug? 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 Where's the kitty? 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 Perfect. So now, um, when we are dealing with uh, wildlife, there's always the unexpected. So we need something to bridge, right? So I have been training Benji all along. You have seen um, building the patterns, building the muscle memory for him to reorient, to look at me, to uh, be able to absorb the distractions on the environment and to be exposed to, uh, to movement of other animals. And I'm, I'm choosing in a way that I know um, 
the less triggering to the more triggering. Now I'm going to do the look at that with him. I'm not going to use a clicker here. I'm going to mark with a yes. Either way is fine. It's actually your choice. Um, but I'm going to use a prop, and this is a bunny. He knows it's a fake bunny, but the bunny moves and the bunny makes some noise. And um, I want to start from very low, which this one uh, I found uh, to be good, not only with Benji, but other dogs. And again, he is relaxing on the mat and all the time I'm keeping him relaxed. Uh, you will see his movement of the head, um, it's a little bit more probably um, pronounced here. Um, and let me let me start the, this video so you can see it in action. He notices the bunny and turns to me. He tilts the head to show me where's the bunny. And now the movement. Where's the bunny? Yes. Where's it? Yes. And you can hear my just was a little bit excited because I I saw yes. him calm. Where's the bunny? Yes. And let me make a stop here because you can notice Benji is on a leash and there's a squirrel right here. So I'm deciding that based on what I know, Benji is not ready to be off leash yet with the squirrels um, and for his protect, well, for the protection of the squirrels and um, not to damage the game either. Um, I decided to have him on a leash because with the squirrels, you just never know how they are going to react. Um, I have very yummy treats and I'm glad I did because you will see in the video that uh, the squirrel comes very close to us and Benji got a little bit of stuck. So I have to intervene giving him the treat. The squirrel went away. That part is not shown in the video. And then we actually keep walking the other way, but you will see it. There he is. I noticed he's getting, uh, let me show you. He got a little stuck here. I can notice his ears, the position of his body. He's a little tense. So I knew I had to intervene there. But um, many sessions later, we were actually oh able to do this. He's actually using his eyes many times to show me where's the squirrel, which you can see them here. So, um, oops, okay. So now um, I want to show another example. Um, this is Mocha, another client. And I want to show how it was before Control English. And Mocha uh, liked to chase Bagheera the cat uh, and play with her. There was no predatory here. It was more like fun, um, um, kind of chasing, rough playing with the cat and the cat didn't appreciate that. So you will see the before control on leash. Mocha went through pretty much all these steps that I shared with you in this video. And um, um, you will see the after. Let's see here. No, 
Okay. I think you got the idea. So Mocha did the same pattern games that I shared before. Um, and then this is again the bunny because for Mocha, um, one thing that it was very triggering is when the cat was moving. Um, well, I mean, she was very triggered even with the cat standing, but the cat moving was absolutely uh, getting her crazy. So um, you will see it. She's she showing where the bunny is. And then here we are going to see Mocha pretty much playing, look at that with her mom and going to report to her mom, her owner, uh, that that cat is there. At the beginning, when she goes to the um, her owner, you will notice that she's a little bit anxious, I think, a little bit triggered by the cat. And as she starts playing more and more, the look at that, uh, she becomes more um, calm. And Mocha is also uh, became very proficient in taking a deep breath. I will mention to, um, about that uh, later, um, which is basically when, um, when we have the look at that, I like when the dog turns to the handler to take a deep breath, especially when we are dealing with um, a squirrel chasing that helps them relax but you will see in this video how mocha makes the decision to go and look for her mom and tell about the cat let's look at the video where's the cat where's the cat yeah. so she's using an ear where's the cat yes so you can see sometimes she flicks the ear where's the cat She's showing the mom the cat is there. Mocha, where's the cat? Yes. <laughs> Con tu niñita. Mocha, where's the cat? Where's the cat? Yes. Where's the cat? Yes. And, um, and this is the video that I was talking about. Um, you will see me and Benji, I'm using Kibble here, and we are in a very um, distracting environment with geese, who, uh, which were very triggering for Benji more than dogs. And there's, um, you will hear airplanes and cars and everything, and I'm using Kibble. The way that Benji at this point is showing me where the geese are is a little bit more subtle. Sometimes he's using, you know, like a little tilt of the head, or moving his eyes to where the geese are. So you might not see that in the video, but um, as dogs become more if, uh, proficient in the game, you, sometimes you don't see the tilt of the head is more subtle. They use the, e the eyes or the ears um, to report something is there. Let's take a look at the video. This is just cable. And I put dogs, but you will see those are geese.
and you may hear me asking him where's the dogs <laughs> you know i use the wrong word it's geese so my husband cannot correct me about that <laughs> You can see that he looks, he orients rap fast towards me. And at some point you will see the geese uh, flying and Benji doesn't respond. I mean, he still stays calm right there. He stays calm, he notices and we keep going. So I mentioned about relaxation be, and focus being a good base. And I also mentioned about Mocha and Benji as well, uh, taking a deep breath when we are doing the look at that game, when they turn to the handler and look at you, they take a deep breath. That helps them to um, calm down because you know when they have this desire to chase the squirrels um is um can, it, it helps them to rebalance themselves so i want to share here a video by another certified control english instructor where she is teaching how to take a deep breath uh we call that in control instruct uh, uh control english tab but uh, this method was created by Dr. Karen Overall who was a uh, Leslie McDavid mentor and Dr. Karen Overall she calls this biofeedback. So I'm going to start the video. Um, the first part is without sound and um, but the other half um, you will hear more. Let me see if we can start it maybe a little bit. Uh, right, right here, I think. There. And teaching this is easier than um, most people think because it's very organic, um, but um, it's capturing when your dog is breathing and flaring the nostrils or um, you can see a poof um, behind the nose. It's pretty much capturing that behavior. I'm going to start with some more subtle breathing so that you can see what you're looking for. There was an inhale. Here you're going to see her lift her head up a little bit to take to smell. Here her nose moves a bit as she's inhaling. And in this next one, you're going to see a deeper inhale right there. So here's a different angle. We start to get a wider nostril flare. Right there. That's a more subtle breath. And then we finish with another wider nostril flare right there. So here is another dog. You're going to see that it looks different with each dog. There was a very obvious inhale. This dog has a bit more of a poof. You can almost see it a little clearer behind the nose. Right there, nice deep inhale. Here's a puppy learning to take a breath. So again, it's a little more subtle, but you can definitely see the inhale. Again, almost even behind the nose. This dog has a more obvious nostril flare. Again, it looks a little bit different on each dog. So 
next dog is the most obvious by far. We get a very distinct nostril flare and a bit of a poof. So don't worry if your dog doesn't look like this, if it's not this obvious. Again, over time, as they figure out that you just want them to breathe, you may get these more obvious nostril flares because they want to be really sure that you see it. Well, and now I want to show Mocha. Um, we saw her um, earlier with the cat and she also became pretty, pretty comfortable with taking deep breaths and you will see her nostrils getting a little bigger when taking the deep breath there. So um, that's uh, in a nutshell, um, the um, how to teach dogs um, using the control on leash um, framework and look at that, an alternative behavior rather than chasing and perhaps even killing uh, wildlife. Um, I recommend if you want to learn more about this to buy uh, Leslie McDavid's, uh, McDavid's uh, Control on Leash books and DVDs. Also, Leslie has an amazing um, video. It's about 45 minutes where she goes really deep into the look at that game. And if you want to get in touch with any um, certified control uh, certified uh, control English instructor, here I'm actually adding a list of those of us around the world. I am located in Vienna, Austria, uh, but there are many people, uh, many uh, certified control English instructors um, around. And then here, um, an excellent video by Dr. Karen Overall about techniques, um, how to help your dog to relax. And that's all I have for now. Thank you so much for um, the um, um, bearing with me with the hiccup. And now if you have any questions, please um, let me know. I'm all ears. Awesome. That was so much, so much great information. We have a ton of questions in the chat. So I'll awesome. start off. We got, we got a question or a couple of questions about the up down game and whether it's important to put the treat on the ground versus dropping the treat on the ground and why we're putting it on the ground instead of feeding directly to their mouth. Okay. That is a very good question. I actually like, and right now I have evolved to the point that even when I'm doing the look at that, I prefer to feed the treat on the ground because for dogs who are uh, stimulated by critters, it's better for them to um, learn the pattern of, you know, eating on the ground instead of having the eyes around getting triggered by the environment. But also it's more enriching because, you know, they have all these smells. It makes it a little bit more rich experience. And uh, yes, I don't know if that answers your question, but yes, I would prefer to put it on the ground if possible. Although if you do it on, directly on the mouth is okay. I have done it, you have seen in the video many times. Um, but right now, um, going moving more towards feeding on the ground and one one problem with just dropping it on the ground is sometimes your treats bounce and go in different places so that can be a reason to put your treat on the ground instead of just dropping it exactly exactly yep um someone asked with mocha did you start at the beginning with the up down game and were there multiple steps between the bunny and the cat Absolutely, absolutely. Always start with that game. Actually, you know, with Mocha and with Benji, I didn't mention that, or maybe it was not very clear, but um, the, uh, not only the up-down game, which is the foundation, but also the take a deep breath because that helps them calm down. It's when, if you are a little bit anxious or triggered for something, when you take a deep breath, you feel like you can, can I regain yourself? So uh, those two behaviors are really important. And there's many steps in between uh, be the bunny and the cat. In the case of the cat, uh, there was a lot of management involved because one thing, and also with the, the squirrels, something that um, I'm glad about this question because um, 
when I was training the behaviors and building Benji to, um, to set him for success, there was a lot of management involved. When we did walk-ins, for example, I tried to avoid areas in which I knew we could encounter squirrels like very, very close. So we started with the squirrels at the distance that he could manage and play with me. With Mocha, uh, there was some management involved with the cat not being, you know, close to her, um, just maybe in another room. So Mocha could observe at the distance and always being supervised by the owners. Um, yes, there's many many steps that I, it will be totally probably like a, just a class, maybe six weeks or more, because with both dogs, it took months to get them from the starting point to the, you know, the, the, the video where you saw them being proficient with the behaviors. Awesome. Okay. Another question with the geese, are you clicking and treating when the dog looks at the geese or when he looks at you? I'm actually not clicking. Um, if you notice in my videos, I'm not using a click, which is very good to use click. I'm, I love clicks, but uh, one reason why I decide not to use the click in this type of cases is because for some dogs, the sound of the click might be a little, um, how can I say it? Not necessarily triggering, but a, just something a little exciting maybe. So I try to make it as calm as even as possible using the jazz. Now that being said, when I got emotional in one of my videos and my jazz was very like loud, so give and take. Anyways, I uh, for the look at that, you click or mark when the dog is looking at the object, at the geese, at whatever creature. And at that moment, he will turn to you and then you reinforce with the jummy treat or whatever your dog finds reinforcing. Awesome. Another question, our dogs run out the door to chase bunnies and bark at the neighbor's dogs. How should I handle that exit transition? Should I keep them on leashes to start until they get good at it outside? Well, management. Uh, definitely, you know, on leash, but also trying to not expose the dog as much as possible um, to that um, situation, because we want to pretty much um, manage them in a way that they don't rehearse the behavior we don't want. We want them to rehearse and develop the the desirable behaviors, right? So if there's a way for you to manage and avoid him being in that situation, it, it's better. Awesome. We got the question, how can we rewatch this meeting again later? It's being recorded. I'll post it and send it out to everyone tomorrow. Um, if the dog is allowed to chase squirrels in certain contexts, would that decrease the value of the training games? Yes, absolutely. And I mean, and it's confusing for the dog because um, th they don't know, um, in, you know, you're putting the dog in, in a confusing situation is, am I allowed to chase the squirrels or not? And I'm very clear with my dog. He can play, squirrels means we are going to play look at that. He never it never means you can chase the squirrels because it, those subtle, you know, uh, distinctions are not very clear to dogs. So I, I prefer to be super clear with him. These are the rules. We play this game. You don't chase the squirrels. Awesome. I think that is all the questions we have, unless someone else wants to post something in the chat. A couple of quick reminders. Again, this was recorded, and so we will send out the presentation link tomorrow. Um, if you're in a position to make a donation, we would really appreciate that. That allows us to pay our speakers as part of this series. Um, it will be posted to YouTube, so there are things like captions and changing your playback speed on there. And thank you so much to Sania for, for this amazing presentation and for talking to us about look at that and some of our other pattern games. We really appreciate you coming out on a Saturday all the way from Austria to do this presentation. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody for joining us. And um, I hope that you have a great weekend. Have a good one. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.